Hello and welcome to the Residual Royalty Academy. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can get your first 1,000 subscribers and get those 4,000 watch hours that you need to reach monetization for your YouTube channel. Now you might be thinking, well, I don't need a YouTube channel. Um, I don't need to build a personal brand. I don't wanna talk. I don't wanna show my face. I don't wanna do any of those things. But if you watch to the end of the video, I will reveal a little business model that I don't do myself because I don't have time, but I know there's people out there killing it with this business model uh, and that's growing YouTube channels where you don't need to be on there, you don't need to have your face shown, um, but you can still make incredible amounts of money by growing certain types of channels. So if you make it to the end of the video, you'll be able to see that. But this is gonna be based on my experience. So as you can see, if I go into my channel dashboard, I am now a YouTube partner. Uh, if you go onto my analytics, you can see that now we are collecting revenue. So we've got $0.003 there. That's actually delayed because I only just turned on all the monetization. So I would expect that's gonna be around 100 to $200 per month based on the current amount of views that I'm getting and based on the CPM, which is the cost per milli, which is basically how many uh, dollars you get per thousand views. Um, so this has just not been updated yet. So I'd expect that should be, you know, maybe $5 a day, something like that. But you can see if I go on to this last 90 days, you can see there's 2.3 thousand watch hours, 1,000 subscribers, 50,000 views. And if I go into lifetime, you can see the gradual growth over time. So you can see we started over here around the start of August and we've just gradually grown since then. And since then we've got 2.6 thousand subscribers and 4.1 thousand watch hours, which means that we hit monetization and the channel is now collecting revenue, which is fantastic. So let me go back onto here and I'll share with you my experience. So number one, the secret, the number one secret is to upload consistently. So same day of the week, same time of the day, same number of videos per week. And that way the YouTube algorithm and also your subscribers and people who are watching know exactly what to expect and they know when you're gonna post. So the only exception and the only time that I haven't posted um, on a Monday, Wednesday or Friday since I started this channel was actually this week because I was just waiting for the monetization to kick in. So if I just go back to, I think in the 90 days one will be perfect to show this. So you can see that how consistent this is. So you've got 222, 222, 222. These are just all different videos being uploaded. Um, let me try this one instead, 2020. It's gonna be pretty much the same. If I do last 28 days, you can see the consistency again. So you can see that'll be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, obviously in the last week I haven't uploaded because as I say, I was waiting for that monetization, but just consistency is a great thing for the YouTube algorithm and also for you. So let me go back onto here now. Um, so what you wanna do is plan the videos and schedule the videos in advance. So as I speak today, I'm gonna to be filming six YouTube videos. Uh, tomorrow I'll film another six and that should make me enough content to last for a whole month uploading three times a week. So it doesn't matter where you are, there should be no excuses. You know, when I was out in Bali, I still made it happen. I still made sure I had three videos per week. I was planning to go to Japan before the coronavirus and the consequences of the coronavirus hit. And what I would have done is I would have just planned a month worth of videos because I know when I was in Japan, it would have been pretty hard to actually film these videos and to get them out consistently. So I would have just filmed all the videos in advance and just used the schedule feature on YouTube um, to make sure they go out at the right time on the right day every single time. And this is another thing that somebody else told me when I was starting my channel. So a big thanks to Ankit for that. If you're watching, he said, if you're doing, for example, two videos a week, don't drop to one because it's just gonna confuse YouTube, it's gonna confuse the algorithm and it's gonna confuse your subscribers. So if you're doing two videos a week, don't drop to one, just try and keep it at two. Um, for example, I always keep mine at three videos per week. You could do once per week, you could do once per month, it doesn't matter, but just stay consistent on the number that you're uploading in any given time frame. So as I say again, if you're doing one a week, don't drop it to one every two weeks because it's just, um, there's no consistency there. And I've already mentioned here, don't make excuses. Don't say, oh, I've got these responsibilities. Just plan them in advance, find some time to make them, edit the videos, just schedule them in advance. So that is really the first point for growing a YouTube channel. The next one is more about getting the watch hours. So longer videos are generally better and will get you to that 4,000 hours quicker. So if I go into my analytics, you can see that my top video with 7,000 views was a 33 minute long uh, live tutorial. So that video was absolutely great. And obviously that got so much more watch time than this one would be. Um, so for example, 4,000 views of this one with an average of maybe two minutes would be 8,000 minutes. But on this one, uh, if somebody watched half of the video here, that'd be 15 minutes times 7,000, which is a lot more watch hours, and it's gonna get you to that 4,000 hours that you need so much faster. Um, and also I think that longer videos are generally doing better in the algorithm as well. So this one was 10 minutes, did pretty well. This one's eight minutes, did really well. Um, obviously the exceptions are the income reports because people just always like to see those videos anyway. 
um, and so they always get a lot of views anyway. But um, in terms of doing longer videos, I really do think that's the best way to do it if you can. But one thing that I always make sure to do on my channel is to keep things, uh, I try not to witter on and say unnecessary things and just repeat myself over and over because I think that's providing really bad value and you're just creating bad videos that people are gonna get bored watching. So if you can create longer videos then that's absolutely great and it's gonna get you to the watch time that you need. But what I wouldn't do is just keep repeating yourself and waffling the same thing uh, like I'm probably doing now, in order to just bulk up the time, just say what needs to be said. Interviews and collaborations are gonna be a great thing that you can do in order to get those longer watch times. I've got a few interviews that I'm planning on doing with some people in the publishing world, and you know, those videos are gonna be 30 minutes to an hour, which is gonna be absolutely fantastic for the views and fantastic for the watch time as well. If you ever run out of video ideas, you can just get ideas from other people in your niche, uh, and also based on your experience. Tutorials and walkthroughs tend to be longer if they're live because they're not so edited. You know, they're just gonna end up being longer. And as I say, the algorithm prefers them. So that's what I would say. So point one is consistency. Point two is longer videos. Uh, and point three is provide as much value as possible. So again, if I go onto here, we can sort by most popular. This is my channel. Apologies while it loads. So my most watched video was a niche research tutorial and arguably that provides so much value and it's showing people exactly how to do KDP and how to make money on KDP. So it's getting a lot of views. You know, this one again is a super helpful video. This one again, super helpful. This one again, super helpful. So the most helpful videos are getting the most views and it's, it's quite obvious really. And if I go to the bottom, we can see the ones that are doing the worst. This is telling people to join the Facebook group. This is telling people to join the Facebook group. So people know they're not really gonna learn anything from this video and this video. It's just me telling them to join the Facebook group. Uh, and obviously some of these other ones were quite early videos so they didn't get as many views. But in general, the more value that you can provide, the more views you're gonna get. And it's quite obvious really, it's the same in every business. The more value you give, the more you get back. So that's really just the general three rules and three secrets that I would say to growing your YouTube channel. And as I say, if you don't wanna build a personal brand or you don't wanna build a brand around your business, what you're doing, what you can do is build cash cow YouTube channels. So maybe we'll search this on YouTube as well. Yeah, it's this dude here. So um, this is actually the guy who is posting on Instagram. And so what he does is he makes like top 10 videos, top 10 uh, mountains, right? Let's just say anything. So for example, this video here, this is just gonna be somebody doing a voiceover and they're gonna be showing some stock images of the best mountains. So for example, yeah, this one here, all time 10s. This is gonna be top 10 this, top 10 that. You can see it's got 5 million subscribers. Uh, and this stuff is just getting so much views. So you can see this isn't a personal brand, this is not one person needing to narrate or show their face. What it is, is they're just getting a lot of facts, doing a lot of research, uh, and then just compiling it into a video, getting a voiceover done, and they're gathering so many views. And obviously with this amount of views, you're gonna get paid a lot of YouTube uh, ad revenue. So it's certainly a business model that you can do, and it's certainly something you could look into if you've got some spare time. And what I would say as well is that, you know, that sounds like it's gonna take a lot of time, but just you can outsource these things. So you could hire a virtual assistant to edit the content, to research the content, and then you just get a narrator. So if you've got some spare money and you wanna do maybe a little side project, then look into Cash Cow YouTube channels because it's a great opportunity. Personally, I'm just so busy with publishing books that I haven't got, uh, got around to doing this, and I just wanna follow one course until successful. So just keeping in the publishing game rather than varying out into these other channels. So just to quickly recap, upload consistently so the YouTube algorithm and your subscribers know what to expect. Longer videos are better and we'll get you to that 4,000 hours quicker. You know, use live interviews, collaborations, get ideas from other people in your niche to get those longer videos, but don't witter on too much. And number three, provide as much value as possible because at the end of the day, people don't wanna waste their time and if they're watching YouTube, they wanna get as much out of it as they can. So I hope that's been a useful video. I'll see you in the next video. We'll be back to the publishing game. They wanna count me out before I'm even up. They wanna bring